So Russia seems like the priority market for you now? Well, we are a global company. We're in uh, about 190 countries. But Russia having uh, you know, 140 million plus uh, inhabitants, uh, an economy that undoubtedly uh, is going to go from strength to strength uh, longer term. Uh, we have a philosophy that we need to be with our products with all consumers in the world. And Russia is certainly an important market for us. So uh, you are not concerned about this uh, forecast that's uh, about deflation and, and uh, coming crisis in Russia? Well, we look at things, but the company's been around for hundreds of years, so we, we tend to take a longer term perspective in the way we do our business uh, and obviously uh, the way we make our decisions. We don't run our decisions on three months basis uh, or quarterly reporting, and we don't make our decisions either on a very short term. Uh, we've been in Russia for a long time. Uh, the factory here in St. Petersburg is from 1860. Uh, so it's probably one of the oldest yeah. factories. And we've seen many things come and go, and we tend to take the longer-term perspective, which is to do the right thing for the country and to help the consumers get to a better life. It's as simple as that. So uh, back to the first question. Uh, yesterday, uh, President Putin held talks with uh, uh, yes, Mark yeah. Rutte and uh, Dutch Prime Minister. So what do you think about the bilateral dialogue? We had a very good meeting. I had the pleasure to meet uh, your president in uh, Amsterdam as well a few weeks ago. And uh, now again we will have uh, meetings today. And uh, the relationships with the Dutch uh, and the Russians are actually very good because it's the, the most important uh, country you actually have bilateral yep. trade with. And uh, so it's a very important thing, not the least because of the port of Rotterdam and the knowledge that is available in both countries. I've participated in three exchanges between the business community, uh, the Dutch business community as well as the Russian business community, and these meetings have been extremely positive and, uh, and constructive in discussions. Uh, yesterday we had about a two-hour meeting with the Vice uh, Prime Minister here, uh, talking about uh, energy efficiency, sustainable growth, very important obviously, and uh, last but not least the financial sector. And increasingly you see opportunities where both countries exchange their knowledge, their technologies, and obviously create business opportunities to make these economies grow. And what are the new opportunities for the Dutch businessmen in Russia maybe? What are the new stories for them now? <laughs> no, well, it depends what, you, what business you're in, obviously. For us, it's very important. Uh, Russia is a major uh, exporter, for example, of sunflower oil mm -hmm. uh, next to countries like Argentina. And increasingly, uh, as the population grows, as the eating habits change, uh, the, diet, the, 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 the pressure on the food supply is going to increase. In the next 50 years, we have to produce as much food as the last 8,000 years. And that obviously puts an enormous stress on the food mm -hmm. system. On top of that, you have climate change and uh, influences that make these food prices very uh, volatile and the availability uh, volatile as well. Yep. So we are working quite actively with the Russian Agriculture Federation on sustainable sourcing, for example, of sunflower oil, and we signed yesterday a declaration to do that. We export about 5% of your sunflower oil for our own products. So getting the Russian agriculture sector to mm -hmm. operate sustainably would be very good for Russia and would be very good for the world, actually. Uh, in this regard, uh, just can you tell me about uh, the, benefits, the benefits that uh, may the, the, the Dutch businessmen get from uh, that Russia joined uh, the... Uh, the benefit uh, is that we can have our business go on for, uh, for a long time to come. The benefit is that we can give our children and their children a better wealth as well. No, no, uh, but I'm we, talking uh, about uh, World Trade Organization, that Russia now is a partner. So, mm -hmm. Or the benefit of the World Trade yes. Organization. Yes. I think the benefits of the World Trade Organization and belonging to the World Trade Organization should first and foremost go to the countries that join. Uh, it is uh, in general the case as countries develop that the more uh, they globalize, uh, the more we're able to increase overall competitiveness and standards of wealth of countries. Uh, the Doha round agreements are being estimated as adding 1 to 2 percent as a minimum to the global economy. So what we have to watch in a time of economic pressure in Europe and the US, that we're not actually going backwards and becoming more restrictive or having more barriers. And the WTO is there to actually ensure that there is a certain level of globalization. Now, Russia benefits from that, obviously, um, as much, and that is important. It makes the Russian industry more competitive. It opens up uh, opportunities for export and likewise for people to go in. We have a uh, philosophy of, of producing mm -hmm. in the countries that we operate. We have four big factories in Tula, in Ekaterinburg, in St. Petersburg, and in Omsk, for, uh, in Markov for the ice cream. Mm -hmm. So we produce a lot in Russia, and as a result, we are also well-placed to export from Russia. 
and the WTO harmonization of regulations will help us make Russia a better uh, export center. And that's good for Russia, ultimately, as well. Yes, sure. Uh, talking about uh, global issues, in one of your interviews I read that you are a bit skeptical about this uh, G20 and G8 things, uh, so the people gather there only to discuss some things, but not to m implement these things. So, uh, did I get it right, or <laughs> just... Oh, well, you're putting words in my mouth there. Uh, what you did get right is I, I much more prefer action than talking. Uh, the, world, the world is long on words and short on actions. And the issues in the world are obviously quite burning. There's a billion people going to bed hungry every day. Yeah. So food security is an important part. There are two and a half billion people not having access to basic hygiene or drinking water. So that needs to be solved. There are 200 million people unemployed in this world. And we need to create 40 million jobs more every year. So the issues that this world has to face, uh, now that there is such an enormous growth of, uh, of the world population, and well as the growth of the economies in the emerging markets, needs to be addressed. Now the G8 and the G20 have 50% of the economy with the G8 and about 85% uh, yeah. of the global economy with the G20. Whilst they don't represent the whole world, they certainly have an influence to make uh, big decisions, especially when it gets to funding. One of the things that I'm particularly passionate about is to address the issue of food security. In this world today, a billion people going to bed hungry, not knowing if they wake up the next day, is simply unacceptable. And that is the cause of a lot of friction uh, that gets translated then in economic insecurity and all that. It gets to the point now that the, uh, the cost of addressing it is far less mm -hmm. than the cost of dealing with the effects of it. And uh, we need to start to address it. Food security, for example, will take an average, and, and nutrition, by the way, will take an average 60, 70 billion dollars a year to address. Uh, and, and I think the world has that money. We put more into Greece or Portugal mm -hmm. to rescue it. Than, than the billion people going to bed. And I don't think one or the other is more important or less. We have to do both, as simple as that. With the G20, we've made great progress. I personally had the honor to chair the B20 Food Security Task Force. Most of our recommendations are being implemented, and we're starting to see the projects gain traction. And uh, so I'm very positive, but it requires, you cannot only depend on the governments. It requires business to be part of the solution. Mm -hmm. It requires civil society to be part of the solution. Uh, because the issues that we have to face today are so complex that nobody can do it alone. Otherwise, they would have been solved already. So it's this partnership that is becoming increasingly more important. I see. My last question is about this, uh, this forum, economical forum. So yeah. uh, what is, just short, can you just uh, tell us about your impressions on this year agenda and just how do you find it? <laughs> well, Russia clearly is a developing country and I think the forum is getting better each time. Uh, it's very important that there is an interaction in the business community uh, that I represent, obviously, of the various countries. There's a high attendance of foreign CEOs. I've met some of them here. I've looked at some of the panels and, and uh, the presence here is, is very good. Uh, and likewise from the Russian side. The Russian uh, business community is taking this also very seriously and most of the people are, are present here. And that interaction is good. Uh, because that uh, uh, you cannot build uh, long-term prosperity if there is no trust and transparency. Mm -hmm. And these type of forums, first and foremost, build that trust and transparency, establish the relationships. So whilst there are panels, uh, most of it probably happens outside of the panels. We have a lot of uh, bilaterals uh, with your government, talking about sustainable agriculture would be one example future investments in Russia would be other examples, trying to understand the direction Russia is taking so that we can make the right business decisions. So these are very, very important forums. And as I said, uh, I've been here several times now, but I definitely see uh, an improvement uh, every time I come. Also more difficult to come in, by the way. Yeah. <laughs>